Welcome everybody, welcome to our home buying seminar. We have a couple amazing panelists with us th this evening. My name is Greg Fisk. I'm the broker over at JPAR Maryland Living. We have one of our amazing agents, Dianca Downs on, as well as Mike Marinucci from Main Street Home Loans. Welcome guys. Hi. Thank you, thanks for having us. It's awesome. So we're gonna kind of um, tackle a little bit the um, soup to nuts about getting started in the home buying process, go over A to Z, what a uh, client would need to do, working with you guys. I like to tell everyone right now, the process, I mean, the real estate market is complicated, right? You see a lot of negative words being bantered about and thrown out there, but it is complicated. And I think like more than ever, now you need a professional to help navigate your way through the offers, through the process, kind of navigate the waters that is our real estate market right now. If you're a a first time home buyer, second time home buyer. So it's more important ever than to have some professionals on your side. So one of the reasons why Dianca wanted to do the uh, home buying seminar, and I know you guys have uh, worked together and I've actually seen and kind of sat in on one of your home buying seminars before. Um, and I know you guys have worked together in the past. Tell us a little bit about um, you know, how long you guys have known each other and how long you guys have been working together. Um, I've known Mike for how long, Mike? Maybe 15 years plus now, I feel like it. Has, has it been oh, that wow. long? Before we got yeah. into the business, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. I used to um, actually cut his hair for a few years and he got into the business yeah. and then um, I came right behind him. So we, it was like, you know, no no, uh, no brainer to definitely work together. Wow, that's awesome. I didn't realize you guys have known each other that, that long. I think uh, Mike and I have the same barbers now. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So Jack doesn't really do too much work anymore now for me, but you know, I'm on that side, more real estate side, you know, but uh, yeah. no, we've probably known each other since what, 20, 21 years old or so. Yeah. You know? So yeah. probably back 2008, nine. Seven, maybe seven, yeah. eight. Yep. So, wow. so yeah, before we, uh, before we got into the, uh, real estate and mortgage business I got in around 2016 and I think you got in around what a couple years after that yeah 2018 2019 yeah that's awesome I didn't realize you guys had known each other that long I mean I know like I said I've seen you guys do your home buying seminars together and help people in the past before I didn't realize you guys personally knew each other that long mm -hmm. so that's, that's yep. fantastic um yeah, so like I was saying, obviously it is a complicated market. Um, it's important to work with professionals. You know, your your realtor is important. I always think of the the real estate agent as sort of the air traffic controller and the the quarterback, if you want to use a sports analogy, um, of the process. And and really, it's important to have that team around you, though, right? Like, what, Dianca, What's one of the first things that you have your clients do when you start working with them in the in the home buying process? Um, I normally try to figure out, you know, what their goals are ultimately, um, how long before they want to actually get into something. And then from there, um, just go in, have them connect with Mike to see where they actually stand, if they're um, ready to start the process right away or see how long it's going to actually take you so they can get to starting the process to get pre-qualified. Awesome. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a little bit of a deeper dive on what that kind of um, client intake conversation looks like. But I guess you kind of nailed what one of the most important things when we start the home buying process, especially in this market, right, is, is that pre-approval process and make sure you have your financing in um, in place and you're in lockstep with your lender because we're going to probably be looking at multiple offer situations. We want to make sure that financing is buttoned down and, and we know what our comfort level is on a monthly payment. And that's the importance of having a, a professional um, like Mike in your corner. So uh, what what's that process look like for you, Mike, when someone comes to you that's getting ready to get pre-approved and start their journey. Sure. So, you know, obviously, you know, as you know, referrals are the lifeblood of this business, so we couldn't do it without referrals. So, you know, I, I take great care of Bianca's clients, um, you know, through the different avenues that we get them, you know, we work together to get some, some she, you know, farms her own sphere and sends them to me. But, you know, essentially what I'm doing in the pre-approval process is, you know, I'm talking to the borrowers, I'm giving them a call, doing an initial call with them, letting them know what the pre-approval process entails. You know, a lot of times some clients are a little, you know, on the fence, not quite ready to do it. So, you know, once you make that call and just kind of walk them through what it is, what you do, um, then it kind of eases that a little bit more to jump in to get the pre-approval. Um, you know, like you had mentioned too, Greg, in this market, I mean, it, it's super competitive. So I always, you know, in this market, harp on people saying, you know, you want to get pre-approved now. That way, when you find a property, you can act on it right away. Because if you wait till you find a property, you're going to miss out. 
Um, but, you know, so generally, you know, the things that we look at as far as a pre-approval, I mean, there's going to be a few main components of it. We're really looking at uh, credit scores, you know, is the biggest factor. Income is going to tell us how much uh, you can afford as far as a home and then along with your debts. And then that's really the main component that we look at as far as pre-approval up front from the borrower, you know, so credit, income, debts, where they're comfortable for a mortgage payment, out-of-pocket expense. We want to make sure it's comfortable with them as well. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Let's take a, a little bit of a deeper dive on that. Um, and there's some myths out there, right, about how much money you need down. And you mm -hmm. guys have access to a lot of different programs. Speak a little bit to, you know, what kind of out of money, out of pocket money that, uh, you know, a first time home buyer can expect to. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a pop. Like you said, it's a popular misconception. Everybody thinks they need 20 percent down to get a home. But, you know, that's not the case. Uh, you know, first time home buyers can do as little as three to three and a half percent down payment, depending on the type of program. Um, and then there are programs out there that will give you some down payment assistance and or closing cost assistance uh, for first time buyers and actually repeat buyers as well, too. So um, in years past, you know, prior to this crazy market over the last two years, you know, Don, Bianca and I have worked on ones where, you know, we can get buyers in for just maybe a thousand or two thousand uh, dollars out of pocket. You know, they um, maybe have some closing costs help from the seller. Then we get some down payment assistance from um, some programs through the state and, you know, really helps them get into the home. That's one of the biggest hurdles that first time buyers have is typically that that cash to close, that down payment plus the closing cost. Um, so now where that comes into play in this market is, you know, you know how it is. No one's really given any closing cost help right now. So a lot of times these buyers will have the down payment, but they might not have that extra three to four percent in closing costs. So you can use some of these programs uh, for closing cost assistance versus down payment to help bridge that um, gap and you know get get through that hurdle to get those first time home buyers in there. Sure. sure. Also, what about uh, gift funds? You know, sometimes people aren't aware that they can use gift funds too, right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, generally speaking, gift funds uh, do have to come from a family member. There are some instances where they can come from a close friend, depending on the type of financing you're getting. But generally speaking, it's going to be uh, from a family member. But yes, a family member can contribute a gift and there's really no limit on how much they can contribute. They can give you the money for down payment. They can give you the money for closing costs. They can give it all to you. So um, even if you're doing a 20% down payment, you know, you could have mom and dad come in if they want to give you uh, a gift to pay all of that, they can do that. So there really is no cap on it. Um, so if that is an option, uh, that is a great way to go as well too. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, sometimes don't be, people don't realize that, you know, that it is an option as well. Right, so, right. Um, and I'm going to come back a little bit to that process. Um, but, Dianca, let's talk a little bit about that uh, client intake uh, a little bit. You're going to have that sort of discovery conversation with them, see what their wants, needs, desires are, um, formulate some, kind of a checklist, right, for, for yes. when, when you start shopping. Like once Mike does his thing and he gets them pre-approved, they know what their comfort level is. Mike's sort of laid the groundwork and set the expectations for them on the financing side. You're going to take that information and you're also going to gather what, you know, what their wants and needs are as far as location or if they have any um, family needs, housing, through, you know, bedroom, bathroom configuration, that kind of thing. Well, what's that conversation look like? Um, normally, once we do all of that, I kind of sit down and go over um, what they can expect as far as like the, the contracts, of course, um, between the broker and themselves and myself, um, kind of go through the contracts as far as like what they'll be signing when submitting the offer, um, explain anything that they may have a question about. Really, I just kind of go through everything when it comes to submitting the offer and just paperwork <clears throat> in general. Um, yeah. After that, you know, we have a conversation as to, um, I guess, setting expectations and letting them know, you know, explaining how the market is in the moment and what they can expect as far as like the down payment and stuff and, and closing costs. Um, kind of re just doing what Mike already kind of put in, just reassuring them the things that he said. Um, and then from there, we decide on a great time to go out. As far as our schedule, I'll sit down and talk to them to see, um, you know, when's a great time to go out. Some people can go out during the week. Some people can only go out on the weekends. Um, and then we just set stuff up um, when they want to actually submit an offer and everything. I have them um, send me or Mike actually the property they're interested in so he can kind of run the numbers so they can see where, you know, financing wise, what they may need to bring to the table and if it'll fit within their budget. But um, 
That's great. And, you know, having worked together before you guys probably have this process in place. And, you know, I know a couple of things that, you know, a lot of times people are online and they're searching other third party webs, you know, websites or and getting some property information. But it's always important to run that by, by you because some of these third party um, uh, property information sites might not be super accurate. You've got your Zestimate out there. We know that, uh, um, it, it, you know, that may not always be the most accurate um, estimate on property values. That's what you're there for in the ACA to help them do that competitive market analysis on a price, help them formulate that price too, right? I, I actually um, have them come, go through my app. I send them my app, all my clients, my app, even if they aren't my client, just people that are searching in general, I have them go through one specific app and that is definitely up to date, like real time. So I don't, let, you know, I tell them don't look on Zillow, don't try anything else because you never know, it may not be true, you know, information. So I always start, put them through my my home snap app. Awesome. And I mean, that's linked directly to the multiple list it's, itself and you're going to have the most up-to-date information which is again, another reason why you're gonna to wanna to work with like a real-time professional in real time. And I'm glad you kind of mentioned the contract process too. Like in Maryland, we have buyer agency. And basically what that is, it's, it's, a, it's a contract between you and your clients, your buyers, you, you turn a customer into a client, uh, creates a fiduciary relationship where you legally have to operate their best interest, right? Um, yes. A lot of that may not necessarily be known in the public. And people get, people are afraid sometimes to sign these contracts. They have termination clauses with them, but it's really in the buyer's best interest, right? When you have a buyer agency agreement with a client. Yes. Yeah. And like I said, you, you have to legally operate in their best interest. If you're going to be working on, on their behalf, negotiating, we have to have that buyer agency agreement in place. So, you know, as the broker, if anybody ever has any questions about something like that, they can call me directly at the office 410-260-0202. Be more than happy to answer any of those broker or agency questions. But if, you know, when Bianca is working with you and they have that buyer agency, it's really in your best interest um, to have that in place with her. And it allows her to operate and negotiate in your best interest. Um, and uh, sometimes the paperwork tends to scare people, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's oh, yeah. another great thing when you have uh, Bianca explaining those things to you. Let's talk a little bit about, so you, you know, you've gotten pre-approved, you've started the um, home sh shopping process. Uh, they're using your app. They, they identify a property. Another reason in this market to have, you know, all your expectations in place, making sure the Anka knows what your needs and wants are in a house, making sure you're buttoned down with, with, with Mike, because we're really in a just in time inventory situation, right? Like you've got to be ready to to strike while the iron's hot in this market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, I'm sure you're seeing it, Mike, on the lending side. Like, you know, if, if a property goes on the market and it shows well and it kind of checks off most of your boxes, if it's checking off four of your five boxes, it's it's probably checking off boxes for other buyers too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're going to have to be ready and willing and able to um, make that offer. So again, that's why you want to have the whole process buttoned down with you, with your team, Bianca right. and Mike, in right. place. Absolutely. So then you guys are going to go out, Bianca, you're going to um, get, you know, talk to them about what the offers are going to set the expectation on, not only price. And, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but in this market, we may have to over offer above this price, right? Mm -hmm. um, hopefully the property will appraise, but if it's a really hot property, it shows well and it's checking off lots of boxes. It just came on the market yesterday or today. Um, properties, a lot of properties are going for 105, 110% of list price. So, we just got to set that expectation in this just-in-time market that you may, if it's checking off, like I said, four or five of those boxes, you might have to offer over list price. So it's just mm -hmm. an expectation that we want to um, set. And you're going to coordinate with um, the settlement date. Again, you're going to follow up. Mike. Mike's going to kind of make sure, you know, double, double back around with that client, make sure everything's still good to go with them. Um, and then you're going to put the offer in on their behalf with the, with the listing agent in this in this market so mike i just wanted to this is kind of where i wanted to circle back around a little bit and and explain that process a little bit on the lending side moving forward with like what's your who's the processor what's the underwriter and what can a client then expect from you you know they've gotten pre-approved Dianca's, you know taking the baton she's taking them out shopping they found the house of choice they've confirmed with you they've written an offer now we're contract to close What's that look like for your clients now moving forward in that contract to close process? 
Sure, definitely. So just to kind of hit on one point, you kind of mentioned it earlier too, about the sports analogy, the way I kind of look at it is like the lender being kind of like the head coach gives you the game plan. And then the real estate agents, like the quarterback, they go out and execute it. Right. Because, because, because the borrower can qualify for a $500,000 house might not be where they want to be, to be comfortable for, you know, mortgage payment out of pocket expense. So, you know, I relay all that information to Bianca. So she has that game plan to take them forward. So, you know, we meet that game plan, we meet that criteria, we get them under contract. So essentially the next steps are, it depends on how long ago we did the pre-approval you know we might have to update some pay stubs or bank statements or something like that um generally speaking you know credit reports are good for about 120 days which most people once they get pre-approved are usually finding something in that time frame um you know, this market, some a little bit longer, but uh, usually in that time frame. So really, it's just uh, me reaching out once we get the contract in. I go over place. I look at, you know, go over everything, look at the contract, um, you know, see what see what's in there, what our sales price is, look at any addendums in there, things like that. Um, and then typically I'm sending a revised, you know, fee sheet to the consumer, just letting them know, OK, I know we talked about you know, 350, but I know we made this offer at 375. Here's what this is going to look like now out of pocket. So, you know, I get that updated. Um, and then, yeah, it's really just us going to work on getting the loan approved once we have the contract in place. So typically um, within the first few days, we're ordering the appraisal, we're ordering the title work, we're getting updated docs from the borrower, we're sending out uh, what's called loan disclosure. So we have to get those to the consumer in a certain amount of time. Um, and we need those back to really be able to kind of process and do a lot of the back end things that we need to do to get their loan approved. So that's usually where I hand it off right there. Once we get loan disclosures back, we hand it off to our processing department. What they're gonna do is then they're gonna review that file with a fine tooth comb and see if there's anything additional needed from the, uh, the buyers before it goes to underwriting. So they might reach out, get a few things updated, maybe um, some letters of explanation, X, Y, and Z. Um, then once we have everything buttoned up, then what we do is we send that to underwriting. And then underwriting is where you're going to get your loan approval. Uh, typically, an underwriter is going to say, hey, we have a conditional loan approval for you, meaning thumbs up. We reviewed the loan. We like it. Um, we might just need X, Y, and Z to finalize it. And a lot of times that's things that haven't come back yet, you know, appraisal, title work, you know, things like that. Um, so that's the conditional approval. And then really you work on tracking, getting the rest of those items in. Um, and then submitting for what they call a final approval or a clear to close. And shortly after that, you got the keys to the house. Awesome. Awesome. You, did, you did a great job of kind of explaining that whole process. There's a lot in there to unpack. Um, and I tell you, you know, obviously with all of that going on, there's a lot of moving parts. That's why I say it's important to have a good team in place, right? And communication is key. Communication between the realtor and the lender and also the title company. We'll talk about that a little bit moving forward too. But I do tell you know all our clients look this process is is going to be a little bit lumpy there's probably going to be some turbulence right mm -hmm. in contract to close expect that you know part of our job as the team and uh, you know going to bat for you on your behalf is to smooth out those bumps right smooth out those room bumps and we're going to get you from point a to the finish line with as little turbulence as possible so right. that's part of our, uh, what our job is and um we talked a little bit about the appraisal process we'll talk about that but also when you're formulating that offer, Bianca, you're talking to them about home inspections, right? Here's where you're sort of that quarterback again. You're going to set up uh, home inspections. And around here, we could be talking about structural mechanical, radon, um, wood destroying pest inspections. If there's a well, you know, well inspection, septic inspection, Definitely. chimney, chimney inspection. We're up to five different inspections. You know, we may have to coordinate. And of course, there's the appraisal process that the, is really going to, you know, the, on behalf of the lender and the lender is going to sort of initiate all that, but that's another out of pocket expense that the, the consumer may have. But just keep in mind, we're going to have some of those inspection and appraisal expenses moving forward in this process too. So, oh, and also too, Greg, one thing to chime in on the lending side, depending on the type of financing you're getting, you might have to have some additional inspections done as well too, depending on, right. like I said, the type of financing. Right. Yep. So again, this is why you want that team in place, making sure that, you know, you're cut all your, you know, you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's and, and you're getting all those um, inspections that you need and covering you. And you just want to make sure that you're doing the proper due diligence on whatever home you're purchasing too. So that's where these guys are coming into play. You know, typically you're going to have those, you're going to have that inspection period where you're doing your due diligence inspection wise on the property. The appraisal is going to be done in that time frame as well. And while all this is going on, um, Dianca's probably flipped it over to a title company. We've ordered, uh, you know, title work on it. 
the title company is probably like the last piece of the puzzle where they're going to, you know, they're going to do the due diligence on the property history. They're going to hire an abstractor and they're going to get um, everything in place for settlement. Make sure that deed transfers um, clear of any clouds or encumbrances and liens. They're kind of sometimes the uns unsung heroes. You know, they're going to be doing a lot of um, back end work on, on this deal as we get closer to settlement too. So again, your, your agent, in this case, Dianca is gonna be coordinating that with the um, title company. And, you know, everyone's gonna be communicating. The lender's gonna be communicating, talk a little bit about the um, closing disclosure. Mike, you kind of touched on that. You're gonna send that over three days prior. It's gonna be over there at least three days prior to settlement. So the, the client's gonna know all of their figures, what their out-of-pocket costs are. That's gonna get sent over to the title company. Dianca is gonna be in touch with type, uh, title company coordinating. She's going to request a preliminary alter prior to settlement, make sure that all the numbers make sense and they're in mm -hmm. the appropriate boxes and um, we're comfortable with everything moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, anything else to add on that process, Dianca, as you work with them through contract to close? Um, I do bring in a contracts coordinator, which will help keep the dates and everything in line to make sure everything happens when it's supposed to and on time. Um, so you'll also hear from that person as well that's a part of our team to help that's make sure everything goes smoothly yeah that's fantastic i always use a transaction coordinator on my my transactions as well just to make sure that you know we're as a, you know another third set of eyes on those inspections everyone's mm -hmm. getting communicating with we're sharing the contracts with who we have to share it with um one other thing i guess to keep in mind i know you have access to and we have a preferred vendor network here at um, J Park Maryland Living. If in fact something does come up, maybe on the home inspections, but it might not be something that's serious that needs to be addressed right away, may not be part of the negotiations and all that deal, but if the client needs a contractor, maybe it's after we close and they wanna do some painting or something like that, we've got a full set of preferred vendors that we can recommend to them as well. Yes, I have a link for that that I normally send out as well. Um, okay. Kind of doing the process. To my client so that way they can kind of get those things rolling if need be. Excellent. And then, you know, uh, I guess Sir Mike alluded to it, you know, once you have that, as we move, you know, the ball down the field, we're going to continue those sports analogies as we get closer, you know, we work through the home inspection contingency period, we remove that contingency as Mike and his team's doing their due diligence on their end, we'll kind of get to the point where we move the financing contingency if it passes the, if it comes in and it appraises for the amount um, that we appraise, we kind of get to the point where we have clear to close. And at that point, we're, we're all kind of sledding down, downhill. Really, everything's in titles, um, end of the court. They're finishing up everything that they need. Dianca's going to coordinate with the transaction coordinator time and place for settlement. That's kind of where, you know, everybody gets together. That's sort of the happy ending to this whole process, right? Where you, you get those keys, you get the keys to your dream home, hopefully. And, uh, you know, way back when it all started with that discovery intake conversation with Dianca and getting, uh, talking to Mike about getting pre-approved, now it's the uh, sort of happy ending where you got the keys to that house and you can kind of start making memories in there. Yes. Absolutely. Anything else that you guys have that, uh, anything that you want the buyers to know or any other... Uh, pitfalls that you see along the way that people have made mistakes in the past? There's anything, Mike, that um, you, you you see that uh, clients should know about? Uh, you know, nothing in particular. I mean, you know, what I would say is the the important part is working with a, with a solid lender and a solid agent that are going to be able to navigate that for you. Um, you know, I remember when I bought my first home before I was even in the mortgage industry, um, you know, I had a great lender, great real estate agent. So anytime a problem came up, I mean, they just kind of, they solved it. And it was just for me, just, hey, sign here, do this. So they really made it a breeze and, and, and an ease. And I'll never forget that. And that's the way, you know, I want to treat all of my transactions as well, too is be able to, you know, walk people from point A to point B with as little turbulence as possible. You said, Greg, but you know, when that does arise, you know, something that we can, we can handle and we can take care of. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, all you know, together, we all have the uh, tools and resources to, to smooth yeah. out those road bumps and, and, and create as little turbulence as possible. I know one thing we'll probably be remiss if I didn't say it, like once you start that process and you've gotten pre-approval, don't go out and do anything stupid, like buy a boat, or open exactly. up another uh, line of credit or anything. 
you know. Exactly. Sit tight. You know, once you're pre-approved, just kind of sit tight until uh, until the loan closes. And then after that, if you want to buy the boat, then that's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, uh, why don't we finish on this? So, yeah, Dianca, how can people get a hold of you? What's the best way to, to reach you? Um, the best way is by email um, at DiancaDownsRealtor at gmail.com. Or you can always call me at uh, 443-866-4825. I'm also all over social media. Just search my name, Dianca Downs, and you'll be able to find me pretty easily. Awesome. How about you, Mike? Uh, yeah, so same thing. I mean, uh, phone call, email is great. Uh, you know, cell is you know, really the only number I work with. So that's 443-867-3671. I kind of prefer that way. Uh, but, you know, you can also reach out to uh, my email as well, too. It's just my first and last name. So mmarinucci at MainStreetHL.com. Awesome. Well, I truly appreciate you guys in the, in the time that you guys have given us this evening. Um, again, feel free to reach out to these guys. It's important. You know, I say market is complicated. So this is why you need more than ever to have some uh, professionals in your corner. So reach Absolutely. out to Bianca and Mike and uh, appreciate you guys' time. Thank you very much. Thank, hey, you. thank you. All right, guys, have a great night. Take care. Bye, Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.